So what thoughts do you walk away with from the conference today? I'm very pleased that at this meeting about food security, we had a lot of people who are primarily interested in agriculture, recognizing that agriculture is important, but we have to involve other sectors of government in this work, particularly the sectors concerned with social protection, the sectors concerned with health and education, the sectors concerned with finance. Now, this is important because agriculture is such a key sphere of activity, but its real potential globally can only be achieved if these other groups are involved. Second point, I think we recognize that a lot of the issues in agriculture for the future, particularly when we're looking at climate change and the environment, are local issues. They're issues peculiar to a particular region of the world. Yet at the same time, you need a global, global response to these kinds of questions that enable local action to take place. The link between the local and the global was clear. Thirdly, at the center of all this are small holder farmers and their families, particularly women farmers and their children, young people, farmers organizations, and the overall participation of these groups in the wider policy debate. We had much more recognition of that. Fourthly, that within agriculture and food security, there are a lot of conflicts of policy, a lot of conflicts of priority, but that as long as you recognize that farmers, particularly smallholder farmers, are at the center of it, then the thing can start to improved. So I've got four serious take-home messages from this meeting. Do other people get these messages? Well, I don't think that matters, because this is a meeting not so much for everybody walking away with the same outcome. It's a meeting to get the conclusions of civil society, farmers, community organizations, Africans, Asians, Latin Americans, coming together to feed through to the big policy discussions in the G20. That's what Staffan Nielsen asked for. That's what he's got. It's very clear that there are many divisions in this debate, north-south, uh, business, politics, uh, political colors, uh, technology, finance. What concretely are you looking for when G20 foreign ministers sit down in Paris next month, exactly a month from now? What would you like to see as the outcome from that meeting? You can't seek to harmonize policy and make it coherent unless there is some agreement on where you're trying to get to with these policies. And the one key area that's come through in the G20 advanced discussions that I've taken part in is that food security, which means availability of food, access to food, nutrition as a result of that food, and stability of supplies, this food security is a central requirement for the future of humanity, now by 2050 and beyond. Agriculture ministers, when they come together in one month's time, if they simply say we're putting food security at the center of our policy concerns, that's a huge step forward. If they then say to secure food security, we're going to work for partnerships between civil society, private sector and public sector, that's an even bigger step forward. And if they're going to say that we're going to look for these partnerships and at the same time seek to stabilize volatile prices and reduce the impact of volatile prices on poor people, then we really are moving forward in a big way. This is very, very exciting and it's something we have haven't had in a group of the power of the G20 ever before. Very briefly, we're here in Brussels. Your perspective is that of the United Nations. What role do you see for the European Union in this debate? I've said to you just now that food security issues are global as well as local. The European Union, with its 25 members, is a key entity in the global discourse. It also has, in the process of renegotiating its common agriculture policy, which is a an important policy instrument that not only has an impact on the multi-million inhabitants of Europe, big Europe, it's also relevant to the whole world. That remodeling of the common agriculture policy that Commissioner Siolos and the rest of his team and the other commissioners are going to be working on together because the CAP is a commission-wide instrument is going to have global significance probably in the area of food and nutrition more than any other piece of political action in the next few years. So let us recognize the way the CAP and Europe more generally work is evolving on agriculture is key to the future of food security for our world as a whole.